Test again. Testing, testing. I'm on live. Well, welcome to Christina's Kitchen or Christina's Camping Kitchen, whatever you want to call it. Which camera am I supposed to look at, Daniel? <laughs> well, I'm probably going to look at this one unless you tell me to look at that one. But anyway. Uh, welcome to Christina's Kitchen. We have uh, another online class today, and we have a small audience, and that consists of our employee Lexi and her mom, and our employee Macy, and my husband, which is not an employee. He gets to work for free. But <laughs> like I do, right? <laughs> but anyway, we are so glad to have you with us. Um, this is a very informal, uh, have fun class. So if you have any questions or comments, feel free to put them on the Facebook. Um, and uh, either Lexi or Macy or Daniel will be monitoring those and they'll holler about at me. And uh, we'll be happy to include you in the discussion. So um, Daniel is uh, checking to see if anything's working. He says it's working, so I guess you can hear me. So, uh, Daniel, if you want to come and have a word of prayer, you'll have to take your mask off so they can hear you. I promise we all wear masks here, but um, it's a little difficult to video with a mask on. So, since uh, nobody else is in here. Uh, we can take the mask off. And I live with you anyway. So. Yeah, you which do. Is, which is a very good thing. <laughs> <laughs> but let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Our Father in heaven. have this class again. I pray that uh, as we share together that uh, we will learn. And Lord, I pray that you will bless each one who is listening and online, wherever they may be, that they may learn and uh, be blessed and that we can have a lot of fun camping and cooking. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. So I feel really weird talking about camping inside a building. I feel like this class should be taught outdoors with a campfire and like, you know, my little stove and my little camp pot and, you know, all this stuff. Um, it just, it seems like it would make the most sense. But um, anyway, we're in here. So here I am. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you two to move over here. So that way when I camera I'm actually like seeing people instead of just a camera um, so anyway uh, camping is something that I have always loved to do and our family has always loved to do um, both Daniel's family and my family uh, have been camping since we were little kids and so we love camping um, but of course then there's always the how do you cook for a camping trip? And especially if you're trying to eat healthy or if you're trying to eat vegetarian or vegan or plant-based or whatever you're trying to do, how, what do you fix? What do you eat? What, uh, I get all these questions. And so a couple weeks ago on 4th of July weekend, Daniel and I went on a camping trip, just the two of us. It was our little uh, belated anniversary getaway from our anniversary in March. And our first opportunity to go somewhere. And so we went um, to a little place uh, not very far from our house where there's a boat in campground. And uh, this boat in campground has a lot of memories for us because um, Daniel's family has actually been camping there pretty much almost every year since Daniel was like, what, 14 years old? Is that about right? And uh, so when we got married, he kind of. Um, initiated me into their tradition. So he and I have been going there almost every year since we've been married as well. Uh, my family, uh, we went, uh, did more camping when I was small and through my teen years, but we also did backpacking. Uh, backpacking is a little bit different than camping because you have to pack things a little smaller. And uh, so some of the ideas I'm going to share with you from our camping trips are also from our backpacking chips as well. But anyway, like I said, two weeks ago, Daniel and I went camping and we had so much fun. We ate so well. I think I ate better. I do eat better camping than I do when I'm busy during the week because I'm just like too busy to slow down and eat. So 
If you have time to sit down, relax, and eat a good meal, what better thing than to eat a healthy meal? So uh, um, I think Daniel had some of the pictures from our camping trip going uh, before we started the class. So if you uh, signed on early, you probably saw some of the pictures from our camping trip two weeks ago. And I had so much fun. I actually uh, food logged uh, with photos every meal that we ate on the entire camping trip. And uh, my dream is to add another section to our website with uh, camping and backpacking recipe ideas. But um, uh, until that happens, at least you get to see some of them today. So uh, when Daniel and I go to the Bowdoin campground, uh, we actually do what is called canoe camping. So that means we put all of our gear and our tents and our sleeping bags and our food and everything into a canoe and we paddle down the lake to get to the campground. It's about a two mile paddle from where we put in to where we arrive at the campground and you cannot drive to the campground at all. Uh, so because of that, um, are we having technical difficulties? Okay, well hopefully it will <laughs> work better. Um, so when we uh, do that, of course, we have everything in waterproof bags or boxes or whatever in the canoe paddling out there. And it means that all of our food uh, has to be in a waterproof container. And uh, the place where we go has bears. So we have a bear-proof container. Uh, so I want to show you just for fun. Uh, Macy, I don't know which camera to grab. But... Um, Okay, I want to show you for fun our bear proof container. And that is over here. So, this uh, is a, uh, it's heavy. But this is uh, an idea that we came up with. <laughs> I know, it's. <laughs> yes, we put this on our canoe, okay? Uh, <laughs> when uh, we used to go, we used to just take everything in a nice chest. But when they started having bear problems and they asked, my first thought was, well, I'll look for bear boxes for food. And most bear food caches are really small. They're made for backpacking where you tie onto a backpack. And, well, I want a watermelon, okay? It's not a camping trip without a watermelon. And so I started looking online to find a bear-proof box that would fit in a canoe that could hold a watermelon and fresh corn on the cob and, you know, whatever else you want to put in there. And this is what I found. This is actually a bear-proof trash can. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> so it's actually the smallest uh, bear-proof. I know, right? This is the smallest bear-proof trash can um, that this particular company makes. Um, and it's made to be so bear-proof that a grizzly bear can't get into it. Um, obviously, we don't have grizzly bears here. <laughs> But uh, it, it works like a circular trash can. So uh, you unscrew the lid, and you'll notice on the lid, it's got this little indention. That's because if you actually live in grizzly bear country, you have to put a two by four. Like, you tighten it as tight as you can get. Whoops, on first. There we go. You tighten it as tight as you can get with your hands, and then you take a two by four and a hammer and you winch it on as tight as it can, and then it's supposed to be grizzly bear. <laughs> but that's why it's a big thing in the middle. But anyway, it's amazing what we can fit here. So um, with this, I can fit enough food for Daniel and I for a five or six day camping trip and eat really, really well, like three meals a day, uh, lots of fresh produce. We got all the space in the world, and it fits very nicely in the, in the middle of the canoe. Um, or sometimes we put it at the end of the canoe and Daniel straddles it between his knees while he paddles. But uh, this, <laughs> that's what we put all our camping food in. So anyway, um, I have a few things hiding in it that I'll show you in a few minutes. But um, when I'm preparing for a camping trip, uh, I usually prepare a long time in advance. So, um, because I'm preparing a long time in advance, whenever I see something go on sale that I know I'm going to want for camping, 
I buy it in advance. And um, what was it? A couple months ago, when we had that uh, pantry preparedness class, you saw my camping box that I fill up with the pantry items, and a lot of those things uh, I can use for camping. Uh, but there are a few things I like to put together with ahead of time as well, and one of those is trail mix. I mean, who? not a camping chip or a backpack chip or any kind of chip without trail mix, right? And the beauty of trail mix is, of course, you know, you can go to the store and you can buy pre-made trail mix, right? But you can also make your own. Um, I like to put things in like, um, we carry these here at the restaurant. We have these tamari almonds, uh, roasted cashews. Uh, we have um, uh, dried pineapple, dried papaya chunks. You can put raisins. So many things that you can put in a trail mix, and uh, sometimes if I'm if I'm in a hurry, I'll buy like a trail mix like this from Aldi, and then add more stuff to it <laughs> to expand it out bigger. Um, so I just like get a bowl about this size and just uh, start dumping the stuff that I want in it. So let's see, put these in in here. Is the sound doing okay? No one say anything? Okay, so hopefully that means they can hear me. So we'll put the cashews in here. And uh, just for the sake of time, I'm going to use this today. Um, at home, I like to chop up all my own dried fruit, which is really nice. But this is a tropical, so it has um, bananas and dried papaya and dried pineapple. And uh, not very many nuts. It's mostly fruit. So to eat it by itself is like it's too sweet. So I tone it down with the nuts and uh, mix it all together. And uh, Macy, could you grab me a couple sandwich bags? Look at that. Can you see that? Daniel, looking over here, is that where you're looking? <laughs> I don't know which camera to look at. <laughs> you got it? Just uh, amazing. And of course, you know, if you like um, macadamia nuts, you can put macadamia nuts in there. Um, if you like uh, whatever you like, what I do is I get these little sandwich bags, and I make one per person, whoever, however many people are coming on the camping trip. Uh, so I will uh, fill up a bag. Here, I've got a glove here. It's faster to use your hands. Is that another comment? So we're still having problems with sound. I think it's this microphone, Daniel. Okay, is there a way we can do it with no mic? Can we do it with no mic? I was worried that would happen because this microphone isn't a very good microphone. I'm just going to turn this off. Here's the microphone.
Do you have sound yet? Are we good now? Yes, just because that's the problem with this. This open picks up everything. We can't hear you because it's not. Can you hear me? Is it picking up from this one or this one? I think you can just barely hear you. You can hear the air thing more. I mean, you can hear well, the Well, we can do this. You know, everything you hear is good here. There we go. Is that better? The fridge isn't near as loud, yeah. We can pick up now? Okay, so we'll just use this for sound. Yeah. <laughs> that works. Someone said, I can hear her good. Yay! Okay. Yeah, it's much better. Sorry about that. Uh, I feel like I should start the class over because I don't know how much you heard, but <laughs> we'll uh, at least we just barely got through the introduction. So uh, uh, what we just made was trail mix, uh, which I hope most of that came through. Um, and just put your favorite dried fruit and dried nuts together. And I put individual bags and I write each person's name. Each person gets their own bag. It's theirs to claim for the entire camping trip. If they want a snack or if they want dessert after a meal or whatever, um, all they have to do is go to their bag and they've got their name on it. And when it's gone, it's gone. If they want to eat all the first day, that's their problem. <laughs> but uh, anyway, it gives everybody something that they can claim as theirs. And then of course I do group meals for everything else. So I'm going to set this trail mix aside um, just to get it out of our way. All right. So uh, the next thing I want to talk about is uh, how to stock your pantry, right? Because if you're going to do any cooking while you're camping, uh, you need to be able to season stuff and actually make it taste good so you're not just eating plain vegetables. So my pantry consists of this right here. <laughs> this is my pantry. Um, so I have um, let's see here. I have onion powder, which I uh, have in a little shaker. Um, I bought one of these little shakers from Walmart or Aldi or whatever and emptied it out and used my own. Um, so this is onion powder. That's one of my favorite staples for campfire cooking. Uh, this is salt. I have these little salt shakers which are really nice to keep around. Um, and then this is my homemade country style seasoning which we use here in the restaurant a lot. So those are my main seasonings that I take. And uh, I can season just about anything with those. Now, as far as oil, I don't use a lot of oil. Uh, so for olive oil, I have these cute little salad dressing containers. Aren't they adorable? <laughs> this is my olive oil. Uh, if I need you know, to put a little bit in the bottom of my pan to keep something from sticking, um, or if I need it, I've got, and it comes out in drops, which is really nice because you don't get a lot out at once. Um, the other one I take with me is um, sesame oil. Once again, I've gotten this tiny little dropper, um, so I can just use a little tiny bit for flavor if I need it. And uh, for anything else that I need uh, for campfire cooking, um, I use coconut oil. Um, and those are pretty much all I use. Um, and like this olive oil and sesame oil, that'll last me for multiple camping trips uh, because we don't use a lot of oil. And the nice thing is, this coconut oil looks solid right now, but when you get out camping, it's warm out there, so it's a liquid uh, out in the, the warm camping air. So that's my little pantry. Um, now, when I'm packing stuff, I also look for vegetables that are less perishable. 
because like I said, everything goes in my bear box, which you can see over here. Uh, everything goes in here. Um, and what I do, because I don't have an ice chest, is I make sure that all my vegetables are refrigerated before I pack. And they act like ice in a cooler. And because everything's packed so tightly, plus it gets cool at night, um, the food actually stays cool in this box as long as we keep it under the shade of a tree um, for four days. You can't hear me as well because I'm all the way over here. Well, you want to carry this over here for me? <laughs> so, <laughs> it's, it's pretty heavy. Um, so anyway, uh, this over there? That work. Did you carry that over here? That'd be easier than carrying the bear box over here, right? So anyway, uh, some of the things that I like to put in my box uh, are things that are less perishable, like, I feel like I'm being followed, <laughs> uh, like potatoes. Um, potatoes keep very well. I just store them in a paper sack and I put them in my box. Uh, sweet potatoes also keep very well. They all have to be refrigerated. They store beautifully in a sack. Um, also onions and garlic uh, those keep really well um, those are probably your longest things that are going to last the longest without because you don't generally keep them in the fridge at home anyway um, as far as other vegetables uh, zucchini and yellow squash they won't keep for like a week-long camping trip but you can use them in the first couple days um, and they'll be fine without being refrigerated so those are things i like to use uh, another thing is um, cucumbers. Those keep pretty well. Um, usually I will be able to keep a cucumber, as long as it's fresh, uh, no problem for five day camping trip. So we'll see fresh. Um, avocado, uh, as long as it's not overripe when you take it. <laughs> if you take it when it's a little bit firm still, it will keep really well. And also tomatoes. Once again, you want the firmer tomatoes because then they will keep ripening on your camping trip. The other one I like is apples. Um, let me turn the sound off here. Oops, sorry. There we go. Now the sound is turned off. Um, apples keep beautifully without being in the refrigerator. So that's another one that's fun. And of course, you can eat those fresh uh, or you can roast them over the campfire. If you've ever had a roasted apple, it is absolutely amazing. Um, especially like once it's done, of course, it's not good on a hot day. It's nice for like the fall when it's a little bit cooler. But uh, roast your apple over the fire. You can roast it straight if you like charred apple. Or if you don't want it charred, you can wrap it in tin foil and roast it in foil um, until it's nice and soft all the way through. And then like cut it open and sprinkle a little cinnamon on it and it's like eating cinnamon applesauce. It is absolutely amazing. Um, but uh, another one, especially this time of year when it's so hot, uh, you want stuff that is going to hydrate you because you get dehydrated real easy. And so the, the things I like is melons. Um, I always like to take a cantaloupe with me. If it's just Daniel and I, I just take cantaloupe because that's about the only thing we can eat. I don't have a fridge to keep leftovers, so that means he eats half and I eat the other half. Um, but that is an amazing meal. Or if you want it two meals in a row, it'll keep for a few hours if you like ate it for lunch and then want to eat the leftovers for supper. But it's not going to keep till the next day without a fridge. Um, and then the other one, let's see if I can get this out of here. Uh, is the one I told you you can't go camping without, right? And that's a watermelon. <laughs> that's why I have this big no, box, right? Heavy. That's what makes it so heavy. Yeah. <laughs> now the watermelon is what I take if I'm going on a group camping trip because then I know, you know, with a, a group of us, especially like if we take uh, Daniel's mom and my mom and maybe a couple of friends with us, we can eat, you know, as long as it's not a huge watermelon, we can eat a, a fairly decent sized watermelon pretty well and in one sitting or eat the rest for the next meal. So um, that is a, a must have for a camping chip is the watermelon. But uh, those, um, the watermelon is the most amazing 
as long as I have it well refrigerated, like uh, it's been in the fridge for a couple days, and I put it in just before we leave, pack everything else around it, that watermelon stays cold for a couple days. And the cold radiates and keeps everything else cold. It's like, that's my ice in the ice chest. <laughs> so I don't eat the watermelon the first day. Um, I'll save it for a couple days. Another one that's really nice that keeps fairly well without refrigeration is corn on the cob if it's still in the husk. Um, the shucks keep it very nice and fresh. Um, it doesn't dry out too much. I just stick it in a plastic bag to keep it moist. And um, I usually put it on top after I've packed everything else in the bear box. It's the last thing that goes in. Um, and that works amazing. And if you haven't had campfire roasted corn on the cob, uh, you need to try it. <laughs> um, that, that is amazing. Uh, now, of course, there's more than one way to do it. Now I'm going to walk away. Maybe I should stay over here. Um, there's more than one way to do it. No, I need the space. We're going to have to bring it over here. Should I just pick it up? Yeah. I have a new friend. Whoop. Except I'm going to knock everything over in the process. Okay, so we're going to go like this. This way. There we go. All right, maybe by next month we'll get some better equipment, but this works. Thank you guys for your patience. So if I'm going to roast corn on the cob, um, the way my dad's favorite way of doing it was to do it in the coals. You know how to do that, right? Uh, where you get a fire, you burn it for a while until it's like a nice bed of coals, and then you dig a hole in the ground, put the coals in the bottom, put your corn and potatoes in there, and bury it with some more coals, and put dirt on top, and let it cook for like an hour or two. Um, and then you have amazing you know, ground cooked. And that's really good when you have lots of time. But you know what? I haven't had any camping trips where I had that much time to wait for my food. Usually I'm like, I'm starving, right? So, so the other way that you can do it is what I call the open fire method, okay? Um, and that is where uh, you take your uh, aluminum foil and make sure it's heavy duty aluminum foil, not your regular. Um, and you're going to, uh, let's see where I can put this here. There we go. We're gonna get a nice big piece of tin foil here. You take your corn. Wow, oh, you got a few extra leaves here. We'll take off the big hanging stuff. Take your corn and wrap it up in the foil like this. All right, so that's a lot of layers of tin foil there. Make sure the bottom is covered, the top is covered. All right, and then when Daniel gets a good hot fire going, we just put that grate over the top of it in the little campfire pit. And you just lay that on top of the grate, right over the top of those that big hot flame. And of course, you're gonna have to make sure that you turn them. Uh, we usually rotate them every five minutes, and it takes about 10 or 15 minutes to roast the corn. And uh, when it comes out, like usually, like most of the tin foil burns off because the flames are so hot, uh, and it it will burn through the first layers of shucks. But when you get inside that roasted corn, sometimes they'll have a light brown on the outside, but it has almost like the smoked corn flavor and it's absolutely delicious. It doesn't need any salt or anything on it. It's got so much flavor, it's really good. So that's a, a special treat for at least for one meal uh, on our camping trips. Uh, some other things that I can make ahead of time and take with me that don't require as much refrigeration. One is our zucchini patties. Now the zucchini patties need to be refrigerated, but I've found if I have them in, if I've made them fresh, I have them in the fridge so they're nicely cold before I pack them, uh, they will keep for two to three days without being in the fridge, without going bad. Um, and that is a really nice when you want something that's gluten-free, high protein, um, because they're made out of mung beans and zucchini. Um, so they're low carb, and uh, very filling, and they taste really good with avocado and tomato. <laughs> so it's like 
an avocado tomato sandwich with bread that doesn't spoil quite so fast. Um, like I said, we always take avocado and tomato. Um, the tomato and avocado, I like to put in a big plastic container with a hard lid. So that way I can stick in my bear box, jam everything down, and it's not going to end up with, you know, tomato sauce and guacamole before you're ready for them. Um, it keeps them nice and firm. Plus, it also helps to keep them fresh when it's in an airtight container. Um, but uh, one of our favorites, oh, and another one that I make is a green bean salad. I found marinated uh, green bean salad. Uh, it keeps for a day or two out there without... Uh, if I make it the night before, we're going to leave. Um, it'll keep for a day or two before it starts to go bad. So um, that's another thing if you want something already made that you can take with you. Now, of course, if you have ice and an ice chest, you can do a whole lot more than that. <laughs> but I'm talking about just stuff without an ice chest. Um, let's see, what else have we uh, missed? Okay, so I uh, it is never a camping trip for our family without hobo stew not everybody calls it hobo stew some people call it foil packet dinners um, but that is one of our absolute favorites in fact on our last camping trip uh, daniel and i had it for two meals because uh, we liked it so well so we had it for one meal the first day and then one meal the last day um, that we were camping but for hobo stew once again you're going to need a nice big piece of heavy duty tin foil and uh, when I'm out there and I'm spending time paddling a boat and swimming and exercising you work up a healthy appetite so I can actually eat two of these <laughs> when I'm really hungry but on a regular day one would be enough um, but let's see some of our favorite things to put in the hobo stew are sweet potatoes um, potatoes, uh, zucchini, yellow squash, uh, green beans, onions, garlic. Um, so I'm just going to make one here, I think. Uh, Macy, could you wash the sweet potato for me? Can you just wash it here? We'll wash the potatoes too. Um, so we're going to take a sweet potato. Uh, while she's washing the sweet potato and the potato, I'm going to peel an onion. I had a bowl here, but not this. Daniel's uh, the chef when it comes to the hobo stew because he's the one that has to cook it on the fire. <laughs> but uh, I do all the the prep and seasoning of it, so the two of us work together. He'll build the fire while I'm chopping the vegetables. And then when I've got, he's got the fire ready, I usually have the vegetables all done. And uh, then he gets to be the one to cook them on the fire. So he's got to make sure that the, the flame isn't too hot or too cold. And uh, he gets to turn them. Thank you, Macy. Okay, so the onion, you can just throw it on the cutting board here. Thank you. Obviously, I'm not going to use a whole sweet potato in one foil packet because uh, there's no way it'll fit. Um, nor am I going to use the whole onion either. But uh, for the onion, I just cut them in rings. Can you see, can you see my cutting board? You need to turn it down more. You can see it okay? He wants you to go down more. Does it go down now? Do you see what I'm doing? Okay. So we've got our onions and nice uh, rings. And then we're going to take our potato. It looks like there's some green on this one. So I'm just going to cut the green off. I normally don't bother peeling the potatoes because... Well, for one, this is a small potato. If it was a big one, I probably would have to peel it all. Um, but this time of year, and this is a fresh garden potato. The garden potatoes right now are small, so it's really nice. You can new, use like new potatoes. But I just take the potato and um, I'm gonna cut it into small slices.
The idea is you want all the vegetables to cook about the same amount of time. So your stuff that takes longer to cook, you want to cook them, cut them in smaller pieces. Stuff that cooks faster, you can leave in bigger pieces. Um, let's see, I'm probably only going to need about this much of the sweet potato here. That's a monstrous sweet potato. The sweet potato, I do like to peel, but you don't have to. You can leave the skin on if you want, um, depending on how fresh the sweet potato is. Sometimes they have thicker skins, so I like to peel them. And I have discovered that sweet potato cooks just a little bit faster than potato. So I'm going to probably end up um, cutting the sweet potato into slightly larger chunks than the potato to help them be cooked about the same amount of time. Now we just need Daniel to get the campfire going, you know? Like, it's so hard to demonstrate this without a fire. <laughs> All right, now we can cut this into chunks. You can still see okay. So we're going to put the sweet potato down here and put that on our foil and we're going to put our potato on there and then we're going to put a few um, green beans on there and then I want to get one of these zucchinis. Put some zucchini on there. I love zucchini. I suppose I could put my trash in my trash bowl. It's sitting here for me. Novel thought. Okay. I don't know how. I think this was washed, but I'm going to do it again. much zucchini so we'll just put a few pieces on here and you don't have to put all of these veggies on every single one you can put whatever veggies you like or you could do just all potato um, or all sweet potato or all a zucchini or whatever there's so much you can do but look at this isn't this looking amazing okay so now we need the onion on it This makes me hungry just looking at it. And then we need some garlic on there. Now, uh, you probably, if you've been to my cooking classes, you know that I like to use the garlic mincer, but I don't take it out camping. So, <laughs> so for camping, we just chop the garlic into little pieces um, and just sprinkle them on top. garlic on there I tell you I can already smell this I just like it looks so good doesn't that just look amazing so now we gotta make put some flavor on here we've got the onion and garlic so that's gonna give us some good flavor but now we're gonna go to my pantry here and I'm just gonna put a sprinkle of salt on there let's see this one's gonna work. Let me use the other one. There we go. I'm just gonna put a sprinkle of salt on there. And then we're gonna put some onion powder on there. And I like to go heavy on the onion powder. That gives, even though there's fresh onion already, the onion powder is gonna add a second flavor. So I put lots of onion powder on it. And then, um, 
this one is not melted. So this is a coconut oil. Was there a little spoon? No, but I can grab one. Okay. Just yep. A yeah, just a teaspoon. Go ahead and grab two of them while you're at it. No, just a. I usually just use a camp spoon. <laughs> Whatever spoon I've got. Well, you're camping. You're I'm camping, to. right? Yeah. Exactly. Who needs a measuring spoon while you're camping? Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right. So I just take uh, my coconut oil, and it does not take much. Um, I just put a little drizzle of coconut oil over it. All right. And then I fold it up. So I like to do the sides first. On the sides. And then this flap over the top like this. Can you see okay with that? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then this flap goes over the top here. And I tuck that under. And then because this is going over open flame, <laughs> It's not just sitting on coals. When uh, Daniel cooks, it's, it's high heat, open flame. So I have to wrap it twice. Um, so I do one more piece. If you're doing cold, you just have to do it once. Um, but I do one more piece. And I put it upside down on that piece. Fold it over. Fold the other side over. And then touch these sides in. And it's all ready to go. And uh, when we cook it, uh, we cook it five minutes, then flip it over for five minutes, five minutes the other side. And usually it's between, depending on how hot the flame is, we can kind of gauge by how hot the fire is. If the fire is really hot, it's done in 15 minutes. Um, if the fire is cooler, then it can take up to 20. And of course, it depends on how big your foil packet is too. But usually at 15 minutes, if it looks like it's brown nicely on the tin foil, um, I'll go ahead and take it off the fire and just test it. And I just test it with a fork to see if it's done. And if it's done, it's ready to serve. And uh, wow, what a feast that is. <laughs> so that's hobo stew. <laughs> um, another one of our favorites uh, what time is it, by the way? Okay. Another one of our favorites is um, what we call uh, haystacks. Now, if you've eaten at a restaurant, you probably had a haystack. Camping haystacks are a little different because guess what? Lettuce doesn't keep wet real well. Um, but there's still a lot of the basic elements that we can still use. Um, obviously, I don't use a glass plate. I use a camping plate. Um, but... Uh, you can either do um, chips on the bottom or you can do rice. And uh, let me grab my rice here. If I need rice while I am camping, this is my favorite rice. Uh, you can find it at Kroger and there's different brands and whatever. But uh, this is pre-cooked rice, vacuum sealed, does not need refrigerated, but it does need heated. And so we can put this, um, if we want rice, We'll put this and uh, our beans together in the camping pot and heat them up together. That way the rice doesn't burn to the bottom of the pot. Um, and so then you've got your rice and bean mixture for the bottom of your haystack. Um, if you're doing chips, then uh, we're doing chips, then we just do chips and cold beans and we don't bother to warm anything up because it's too hot outside. <laughs> so I'm going to demonstrate the chips just because I don't want to cook the rice right now. Um, but uh, like I said, you have both options. So you put a few chips on the bottom of your plate and then uh, you've got canned beans. And these are pinto beans. You can also use black beans. They work well too. Um, or if you want thicker, more seasoned beans, you can use refried beans. Um, that works as well. Um, but these are the organic pinto beans, and I'm just going to dump this into my trash bucket. Except it might help if I actually put the lid on it when I dump it in the trash bucket. There we go. Just going to drain some of that liquid out of it. Okay. 
And when I uh, pack for a camping trip, we are big eaters. So I figure about one can per person. Um, so <laughs> if you're not that big of an eater, you probably won't eat that much. But Mercy, when you get outdoors and you are exercising, um, you work up a pretty healthy appetite. So that's one can uh, of organic pinto beans there. And uh, then if you like salsa, you can put salsa on there. Um, I don't like salsa personally, so I don't put it on, but other people do, so that's fine. Um, so then we need some veggies on there. So let's put some cucumber on there. That's my favorite. One, while I'm cutting these veggies, I want to tell you about another campfire fun thing that we've done. Um, I make my own uh, muffin mix using the blueberry muffin recipe on our website, just leaving the blueberries out and leaving, of course, the wet ingredients out. And I'll make a little bag of muffin mix and take that with me out camping. And uh, when we're out there, I will put um, uh, soy milk in it and uh, a little bit of oil and uh, mix that up into batter and you don't have to put fruit in it or you can i usually put some dried fruit in it like dried cranberries or whatever um and then uh, you take oranges with you and hollow out the orange like eat the orange out of the inside but leave it you know in the like just cut the top off so it's like a bowl right and you spoon the muffin uh, batter into those hollowed out orange peels. Uh, put the lid back on, the, the lid of your orange peel, back on the top of it, wrap it up in tin foil, and stick it in the hot coals of the campfire for about 30 minutes. Uh, then you take it off the campfire um, and let it sit and cool for another, uh, depending on how hot it is. If it's really hot, say it'll take another half an hour to cool. Um, if it's not real hot outside, it will cool off fairly quickly. Um, and then each person has their own muffin baked on the campfire. And that is really yummy. Um, I've done that with gluten-free muffins. I've done it with regular muffins. Um, it's a lot of fun. But it does take some patience because you do have to allow an hour before you're hungry <laughs> to get started on that. Um, but it was it's a lot of fun, especially if you have kids, um, to make their own personal muffins. They just get a big kick out of that. Then, of course, uh, you know, when you're doing campfire cooking, uh, it's not camping without uh, marshmallows and hot dogs, right? Everyone knows that. Like, you've got to have, and I wouldn't consider that the healthiest meal, um, but you can still do that even as a vegan or plant-based. Um, they make a plant-based um, uh, hot dog, vegetarian hot dogs that you can use. Um, they also make uh, plant-based marshmallows <laughs> that you can use. And uh, so I always plan in one weekend, I always plan one meal with hot dogs and marshmallows because I mean, obviously you're not getting them every day, um, but it just gives something special to the camping trip, especially if you have kids uh, they get to roast their own uh, hot dogs or roast their own marshmallows. Um, and that's just a real joy for our family. So I always have to do one meal <laughs> with that. So you can see I've got cucumber on here. I've got tomato on here. I'm putting avocado on here. This poor avocado has a bad spot. So we're just putting what's left of the avocado on here, which is what you do when you're camping anyway, right? Um, and... Uh, then I'm gonna need to go wash off my hands with all this gooey stuff. <laughs> Isn't this looking amazing? Mm -hmm. um, Are you <laughs> apparently <Yeah>. I am. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yeah, Daniel's supper is on its way. <laughs> I rinse this avocado off my fingers. <laughs> she can taste it now. I know, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, this is amazing. So then um well, let's see. We got to put olives on here. It's not a haystack without olives. Now, if you don't like olives, of course, you can leave them off. But uh, 
That's one of my favorites. So, you know, if it was me, I'd just dump like half the can on there, you know. Daniel and I can split a can between the two of us, but anyway, since Daniel's gonna eat this one, I won't give him quite half the can because I'll eat the other half. <laughs> so, there's a haystack. That would fill him up. <laughs> that should fill him up, you think, right? <laughs> now, of course, you know, you can always put toppings on top, right? Mm -hmm. Here at the restaurant, we put our creamy herb dressing and our cheese sauce and all that. Um, and of course, that doesn't keep very well without a fridge. But I have found a few things. Uh, this one is an organic non-dairy ranch dressing. It does have oil in it, um, so it's not like something I would live on. But to put a nice little drizzle of that on top adds a lot of flavor. And if I have it as brand new, which, um, here, we'll just do it. Um, I think Daniel would like salsa too, so I'm going to put some salsa on it for him. Since he said that he's the one eating this, right? Yeah. <laughs> Let's put some salsa on it. We're going to make this so good. Like, you guys are going to want to, like, jump out of your screen and eat your computer. But anyway, um, yeah, we got some nice soles on there. And let's just put a little bit of this dressing on top. I'm a firm believer in having some flavor. So eat healthy, but don't forget the flavor because that is so important. What do you think about that now? <laughs> All right, Daniel. There's your plate. Can you see that? Can they see that? All right. We'll hold it over here so you can see what we just made for Daniel. There you go. Just help focus. Back it up. Back it up. Is that better? Yeah, we can see it. Okay. Anybody hungry? Haystacks are served, campfire style. There you go. <laughs> All right, well, we have a few minutes left. I know we're running short on time. I but just don't do olives. <laughs> we'll just do yours without olives. I know, right? <laughs> uh, I wanted to talk about a couple other things. Um, one is like, uh, when, you're, when you think about, you know, maybe I want some cereal, right? Um, there's so many different kinds of box cereals out there. Uh, I don't buy a lot of box cereal. Of course, we make our own granola, and that's one thing I always bring is homemade granola. But if I want to get some box cereal, I try to look at the nutrition facts and the ingredients. So I get stuff with the least amount of ingredients. I look for stuff that's whole grain. Uh, for me, I like to look for stuff that's gluten-free if I can. I also look at the sugar content because you would be amazed at how much sugar is in box cereal. Yeah. Uh, a tremendous amount of sugar. So when I'm looking for box cereal, I'm looking for stuff that is maximum five grams of sugar. I prefer between the three to five gram range if I can. Um, there are some that have less than that, but there's very few. It's uh, probably five grams is about one of the lowest you'll find. Um, so here's a few that I have found. Uh, this one is a, uh, Nature's Path Organic. Do I need to stand over here, Daniel? <laughs> Nature's Path Organic Whole O's. Um, they are gluten free. Um, and like I said, have the low sugar. Uh, another one is Heritage Flakes. These are not gluten free, but they're whole grain um, made out of kamut, spelt, oats, wheat, millet, and quinoa. Um, this is another one that's also gluten free called Mesa Sunrise. Um, and uh, these are all ones I just found at our local Kroger. Uh, and then one of the easiest ones to find, um, this is actually a Kroger brand. <laughs> but uh, this one is actually three grams of sugar, um, so it's even less sweet than these. Um, but uh, it's just got basically uh, four ingredients. Um, this one I don't think is whole grain like these are, which is why I prefer the whole grain. Uh, but it does have less sugar, so sometimes I'll mix them together just to have less sweet in my bowl. Um, you can also get uh, powdered soy milk, um, which is really nice because it doesn't spoil that way. Um, and uh, so I will take that and we just put that over our cereal and add water and mix it up in our bowls and that way everybody gets their own milk. Um, if I don't have powdered soy milk, then I will go for the the um, 
So I have a, that doesn't have to be refrigerated, or you can use almond milk or, you know, the other kinds of milks. But um, I think I've got one in here. This is my soy milk powder, and uh, this is the soy milk that doesn't have to be refrigerated until after you open it. So if you have a big group, you can eat the whole thing in one meal and you don't have to worry about it. Um, but uh, that is uh, options for soy milk. Um, but uh, one more thing I wanted to cover, well, there's a couple more things I wanted to cover, so you have to bear with me. Another fun camping meal is burritos. Burritos are easy because you can just take the tortillas. Uh, you can bring the same salsa and you know veggies to put on it. Um, and of course, you can put rice in it. Uh, and then of course, your canned beans or refried beans or whatever you want. So that's another very easy meal, kind of similar to the haystack or taco salad. Um, another uh, thing that I have done uh, is uh, for like a light supper, uh, you can get you can get uh, organic um, canned tomato soup um, that does not have milk in it. It's very simple ingredients. And you can get this at Kroger. This is cauliflower rice. It's not rice, it's cauliflower. And it's vacuum sealed. It does not have to be refrigerated. And uh, so what I do is I dump it in soup. <laughs> so it adds a veggie to the soup and all you have to do is heat it up. Very easy to do in a camping pot. Um, and Otherwise, soup is just kind of something you just drink. I don't like to drink soup. I like texture. So I throw cauliflower in. Um, let's see. You can also get um, tofu that doesn't have to be refrigerated. Um, and I will do like scrambled tofu with that. So that adds a protein. Um, and uh, I also, and this is what, the, what I want to cover next. I like to dehydrate veggies. Um, if you can dehydrate your own fresh garden veggies, there's so many things that you can do with it. Um, you can make a vegetable stew with it. Um, you can make stir fry with it. <laughs> uh, you can add them to any kind of soup. Like if you wanted to do like a ramen type of soup, like a noodle soup or whatever, uh, you can throw your dried veggies in it and add vegetables to your soup um, to add more nutrition. I like to uh, take these um, bean threads. These are mung bean thread noodles. They cook really fast, and uh, I don't have time to demonstrate it, but I take my pot, and I put a couple inches of water in the bottom of it, and I throw in dried veggies, which I have some here. I'll show you. Somewhere. There's some in the dehydrator, too. Yeah. All right, I've got some dried veggies here. Here's my dried veggies. So I've got dried cabbage, I've got dried zucchini, and I've got dried tomatoes. You can also do dried corn, um, pretty much any of your vegetables you can dry. The cabbage, you have to cook it before you dry it, always it's really tough. The zucchini and tomatoes, you just dry raw, um, very easy, and they rehydrate real quick. So I just throw my dried veggies into the pot and boil that, and I add my seasonings to it. Boil that for a couple minutes just to rehydrate the vegetables, and then I throw my noodles in. And they only take a couple minutes to cook, and then you've got, if you have enough water in, you have a soup. If you, your noodles absorb all the water, then you have stir fry. Um, and so that is a very easy meal. If you're doing more backpacking style, and you want to dehydrate more things, here's another thing we always take. We like to take dried apples. Um, these are home dried apples. Absolutely amazing. Um, but for if you want to do stuff more backpacking style, so you want more dried stuff and less the fresh stuff and the big stuff and the bulky stuff, um, you can take cooked quinoa after it's cooked and put it in the dehydrator and dehydrate it down, and you have like instant quinoa. Um, you just throw it in your bowl and to put boiling water on it and let it sit and it'll rehydrate. Um, or you can put it in a pot of boiling water and it'll cook in a minute. Um, and so you have instant quinoa that way. It doesn't take a lot of space. Uh, you can also take like leftover chili or leftover um, beans um, that you're, after you've cooked them and you know, you've got some leftovers, put them in the dehydrator, dehydrate them to powder and uh, they rehydrate really quickly. And 
and uh, so you can have like instant, you can do that with mashed potatoes. Love to mashed potatoes, instant mashed potatoes. You make your own, you don't have to buy a box. Um, you can uh, do that, like I said, with beans. Um, you can also do it with like hummus. You can make your own hummus and dehydrate it and have instant hummus powder. Um, you can also, uh, you can also make your own chips, like flavored chips. So you could do like zucchini chips in the dehydrator, put some seasonings on it. Uh, you can do uh, kale chips. Uh, you can do apple chips. You can do all that kind of stuff in the dehydrator um, for something that's crunchy. My mom likes crunch. So it gives her something that's crunchy, but low carb and healthy. Um, and you don't have to worry about it. So let's see, I've almost covered everything on my list. So I want to just demonstrate one thing real quick. Maybe if I clear up a couple of these things here. Um, Macy, can you clear up this tray? Here, I'm gonna this and this goes on the tray, and the rest of this is trash. So go ahead and just take that tray off. Not yet. Or you can do little baggies if you want. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. I think I've got some space to work now. Maybe. We're good? Okay. Alright, so this is my dehydrator here. And uh, these are my dehydrator sheets. And uh, I'm gonna take zucchini here. Wash it off. I'm going to show you how easy it is to dehydrate zucchini. It's very easy to dehydrate zucchini. You don't have to cook it. You don't have to do anything to it. Um, what I do is just, uh, just do slices. Just thin slices. Doesn't take very long. And the same with tomatoes, you just slice tomatoes as if you were slicing tomatoes for sandwiches. Um, now with cabbage, I actually run the cabbage through a food processor and then steam it on the stove for 10 minutes until it's nicely tender. And then uh, um, I put a little salt on it and then put it on the dehydrator sheets. But uh, the other veggies, I don't salt them or season them or anything. I just Slice them on and put them on. Now, uh, carrots, you would need to cook first. Um, green beans, you need to cook first. Um, basically, your longer cooking vegetables need to cook, uh, be cooked first before you put them on the dehydrator. But your quick cooking ones, you don't have to. So corn, no cooking necessary. Uh, just take those fresh ears of corn and take a big sharp knife and just cut it off the cob and uh, lay them on the cookie sheet and uh, dehydrate them. And they taste so good, they're like candy. <laughs> you can eat them dried, um, but uh, I usually don't because it doesn't make very much once it dehydrates. It dehydrates into this little bitty amount. Um, so you can see our one zucchini here is gonna just about fill up this tray. So there's one zucchini. That came out pretty good, didn't it? So you put it in uh, your food dehydrator and uh, you put the lid on and turn it on. And uh, I always let it go overnight, about 12 hours or so. And then I check it. And if it needs to be done a little more, then I put it back in. So 12 hours later, look at that. Time lapse. <laughs> that's what they look like after they're dry. How long it takes to dehydrate stuff? About 12 hours, yes. For any kind of veggie? Yeah, some veggies, act, it depends on how thick you cut it. If you cut it thin, it's about 12 hours. If you cut it thick, it can take up to 18 hours. Um, so, but yeah, that's how long it takes to dehydrate. And that goes for apples or yeah. anything else that you do. Um, but yeah, so then you're all set and ready to go. 
So, let me uh, double check here and see if there's anything else I forgot. I think I'm just about done. camping this weekend so hey I've got a head start already <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah so I think that's everything that I had on my list Daniel did you think of anything else I'm forgetting you didn't talk about the park style. I mentioned them well, you did. yeah she mentioned them I did <laughs> but here I'll show them yeah, the these are the marshmallows that I like to use uh, Dandy's vegan marshmallows, you can find them on Amazon. I will say that Amazon usually smashes them in shipment, so they're not the nicest when they arrive. Um, Whole Foods carries them. Um, a lot of your uh, Whole Foods stores carry them, and we carry them. So, um, like I said, I don't recommend eating them every day, but when you're camping, you need a special treat. And so, it's always nice to have the marshmallows. And Daniel and I had a contest on our last cook, uh, camp out to see how many times we could roast one marshmallow and take off the skin, you know, and re-roast it yeah. again. Well, what was our record? Three times roasting? Three times. We got it roasted three times. I take the skin off. I take the That last I'm one was so kid. juicy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're still kids. I know, right? <laughs> I know, I know. I'm like, oh, let me take that off. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. That's the best part. That's right. That's right. So, are there any other Facebook questions? Has, there, um, has anybody been seeing the Facebook? Anybody else have Facebook questions that I've missed? Nope, no questions. No questions. All right. Well, I'm going to say to you go camping because there's nothing better than being outdoors in God's creation. And now you have no excuse uh, for not being healthy while you're out there camping. <laughs> healthy and eat well. So, uh, Daniel, would you close us with a word of prayer? Sure. I'll pray and then I'll run, run the slideshow at the end. If you want a narrator, or I can just run it at the end. I don't have to narrate it, but you can run the slideshow slide at, slide at the end. If you missed the pictures at the beginning, Daniel's going to show them at the end. So, let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for the, the great things that we have learned this evening, for the fun time that we've had together. I pray that you will bless each one who is listening uh, today, uh, that we will be able to get outside and enjoy the beauties of nature and go camping. And we thank you again for the food that you've created for us to eat and to enjoy. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you all. Thanks for joining us, and be sure to tune in again next month. The third Tuesday of every month at 6 p.m., we're going to continue the Facebook Live classes. Um, I don't know what next month will be about, but I can assure you it'll be good. And uh, hopefully someday soon we can actually have a real live audience again. But um, until then, keep signing in online. We love you all, and have a great month.